there are lots of different things you need to know about a 203K, and there's a bunch of frequently asked questions that come up as you're going through it. I'm going to try to cover a couple of those now. There's more than I could put into this video, but here's some things that kind of come up more often than not that I think could be helpful to you. What is a FHA 203K loan? Now, we did cover that in the intro to 203Ks, but it's similar to a regular FHA, but it combines that home improvement loan with a regular mortgage and allows the borrowers to include the repairs and improvements into that mortgage. It ends up giving them a better rate than having separate loans or having a second mortgage or a home equity line of credit or a construction loan. The standard had, does not have a maximum other than what is the maximum for the area. The limited is maxed out at 35,000, but really that's about 30,000 in repairs with a contingency. Who qualifies for a 203K? Any owner occupied primary residence borrower qualifies, meaning it has to be their primary residence, they have to occupy it. It could be a four family dwelling that they occupy one of the units, that's fine. It could also be a single family residence, a duplex. As long as they're residing there and it's a one to four family, it qualifies for an FHA 203K rehab loan. Cannot be an investor and it cannot be um, a property that they're using as a, um, a vacation home, a second home. It has to be that primary residence. What types of properties qualify for the 203K? Well, as I just said, a one to four family unit dwelling, single family, duplex, triplex, fourplex, some restrictions on condo units, but you can use it for a condo. And there are some mixed use residential properties that qualify, but again, there's, there's restrictions there. And the main restriction is it has to be owner occupied. Is there a minimum or maximum rehab amount for a 203K? Well, on a limited, the maximum is 35,000. There is no minimum per se, but most lenders have overlay rules where they'll put a minimum in there. Typically we're seeing $5,000. I don't know that there are any rehabs less than that, but by HUD rules, there could be. A standard has a minimum of 5,000 in repairs and the maximum is whatever the maximum loan amount is for that county. And they take the maximum mortgage limit or 110% of the improved appraised value, whichever is less. So if the 110% is less than the maximum loan amount, they're good to go. What types of repairs qualify for a 203K? Well, the, the list is really endless, as it says. There's 35 different categories from septic all the way up to kitchens and baths and whatever it is. The improvements have to comply with the HUD minimum property standards, meaning that they have to meet state and local codes and HUD codes. And luxury items, unfortunately, cannot be included. If they wanted to put that swimming pool in the backyard, they're not going to be able to do it with a 203K. However, there is some monies available for repairs to existing pools existing pools. Most lenders cap that at 1500 though I have seen that be a little bit more. What qualifies under the 203k? Well, the first thing that is looked at are health and safety issues, things that come up from the HUD inspector, and they must be completed before any of the wish list items can be included. So if, the, if they max out the loan amount on health and safety, can't include any of those wish lists. Most times though, there's some room for some of that stuff, and sometimes there's room for a lot of that stuff. Oftentimes, there's not a lot of health and safety issues that come up, and so most of what's being done is the customer choice or the wish list. Some of the items would include, you know, roofing, siding, windows, doors. You could do flooring. You could redo a kitchen, a bathroom, new septic system, or well. All of those things can be included in a 203K and more. The list just goes on forever, and, you know, if it's not a luxury item and it's something that can improve either the value of the home, or it's an upgrade to the home, making it better, it probably qualifies under the 203K. What is a contingency? That's often asked, and we should really explain that really well to the homeowner or the buyer or the refinancer that's using this loan. The contingency reserve is a percentage of the repairs and renovations. Typically, we'll see 10 to 15 percent. Sometimes you'll see 20 percent HUD does allow for no contingency, but I don't know any lenders that'll do it with no contingency. So you can figure though 10 to 15%, it's set aside for potential cost overruns or unexpected repair items. Cost overruns could be things like materials suddenly change over the six months that we're working on a project. We get toward the end and we have to buy materials and we see that that's changed. That's pretty rare. Lenders are a little skeptical of that, 
but it can happen. But sometimes it's things like we open up a wall and we find out there's something in there we didn't know about. If we find asbestos or we find, you know, mold or we find when we go to connect the plumbing because the plumbing, the water had been turned off, that there's something deficient there. Someone stole a valve, broke off a pipe that maybe they froze and, and expanded. They're in the wall and we couldn't see them. All of that type of stuff. Now, the thing about the contingency is you want the homeowner to know if it's not used for those unexpected expenses or cost overruns, they can use it towards additional work on the project. Still can't be a luxury item, but we want to recommend that they do that. And our project managers are really good at making sure they use that contingency because here's what's happened. They don't get that money back from the lender and it doesn't reduce their payment. The lender will give them a credit toward the back end principal on their loan, which means they might have a payment or two less after paying it for 30 or 29 and three quarter years, but it doesn't really affect them. And the money is already been built into the loan. So what we'll say to them is, listen, we've gotten to the point in the project where we know there's not going to be any unexpected costs and we're not going to find some something that we have to do that we didn't plan on. So what would you like to use that for? Sometimes they'll use it for light fixtures. They might decide to get a new door they hadn't thought about. They might decide to refloor a room they hadn't thought about or replace some carpeting. There's a whole lot of things that they can do with that. And our project managers are really good at making sure they understand that. But as a sales rep, we should also be explaining up front that, listen, your loan amount cannot exceed whatever the dollar amount is, including the contingency. So for example, if they're doing a limited, they have up to 35,000. But if you have a 10% contingency on that, that's 3,000 on 30,000. If you have a 15%, that's 4,500. So really you wanna keep the repairs on a limited at about 30,000 to give room for that contingency. When you're talking about the standard, obviously it's really based on what is the maximum loan they can get. So from that maximum loan, you have to consider it's not just the repairs or the rehab, it's the repairs rehab plus contingency that gets you to that maximum number. Do I need to hire a HUD consultant? Well, the simple answer is yes, if you have a standard and no, if it's a limited, but the answer is not quite that simple. So a HUD consultant does provide valuable information to anybody buying a home or refinancing a home when it comes to health and safety and types of things that they might wanna have done to the home. Some banks will still require a HUD consultant to be involved on a limited, depending on the work that's being done or whether or not the property was in distress prior to being purchased. Now, they, they don't, HUD doesn't require that, but their overlay rules can require that. A HUD consultant, though, can also be used in lieu of the home inspector. Now, a home inspe a HUD, and HUD consultant is typically a home inspector because that's what they're doing, but they're going to look at it a little bit deeper. We want to recommend that it's always a great idea to have a HUD consultant when you're doing lender financed, even if it is limited, because oftentimes they're going to come across things that weren't thought of or that might not be seen by a standard home inspection. And the thing is, if they if we get out there and we price out the job and we, it turns out that it's going to be more in repairs than a limited could handle with the contingency and they haven't had the HUD consultation done, the HUD inspection done, then they're going to have to get someone to come out there a second time if they've had a home inspection to do a HUD inspection so that they can qualify for the standard. So it's a good idea to have them do that. Additionally, um, Sometimes we'll see that we're right on that borderline between being a limited and a standard, and we're not quite sure up front. It's probably a good idea to say to them, listen, you're, you're probably going to exceed that thirty to 31000 you have available for rehab. You might want to consider going to the standard so that we can make sure we get everything in there, as long as there's obviously value to be able to do that. Can a homeowner do their own work? Well, <laughs> the answer is yes, no, and it depends, because... Really, HUD allows for that, but the short answer is no, because most of the time the lenders won't allow that. So most lenders have overlay rules, and that means that they supersede the HUD rules, meaning there's all the HUD rules, and then these go over top of it. It's never that they can cut out part of the HUD rules. It's that they add to that. We usually see that most lenders have those rules in place when it comes to homeowners doing their own work. What does HUD say about it? Well, HUD says that if a homeowner wants to do their own work, they must be skilled and licensed to do so, and that they can only be paid for the materials, never the labor. So they can't you know, put $10 in for materials and $10,000 in for their labor to put that $10 part in. However, that labor has to be built in as if someone else is doing the work. 
And they must get three estimates from contractors, qualified licensed contractors that they have to present to the lender. The lender is going to pick the middle of the three typically, and they're going to use that to base the loan. But the thing is they're building the labor in that's not going to be paid out. So that's part of the mortgage and loan they have. They also, however, the homeowner has to be qualified, licensed, and insured to do that kind of work. So you couldn't have a guy who's a flooring guy say, well, I'm going to do my own work. I'm going to install all the electrical. Well, he's not licensed to do the electrical. He wouldn't be able to get the permit to do the electrical and get that permit closed out by that inspector. The lender's not going to allow that. So the, the real answer is no, you can't do your own work. Even though HUD says, yes, you might be able to do your own work. It's just probably not going to happen in most, in almost 99.9% .9 of the time. Can I purchase a property with an FHA 203K? Yes, an FHA 203K is the perfect vehicle for purchasing a home, especially if it needs repairs or if it has dated kitchen, a dated bathroom, needs some upgrades. Listen, many times a realtor will show a property and a person will say, I love that neighborhood. I think the schools are great. I think it would be a perfect place to live. But oh my gosh, that kitchen hasn't been redone since 1973. And that bathroom's got the, you know, the old tile in it from 1956 and it's just it's tired looking the house looks old even though it's in the perfect perfect place well that is the perfect opportunity to use a 203k to go in and bring that home up to the home that they love in the neighborhood they love so it's perfect and by the way it's also a perfect fit when they're going to refinance if they've been living in the home for a while and it's kind of tired and dated and they didn't purchase it with a 203k and they have to be in there for more than a year to do this but they can refinance with a 203k and take that same benefit of doing the rehab and remodeling within their mortgage keeping the payment at, at the best possible rate and getting all the work they want done and, and stay in the home. Does a HUD consultant approve the cost, the contractor, the lender? Well, here's how it really works. The HUD inspector's job is to go out there and to inspect the property, HUD consultant, I should say, inspects the property, looking for health and safety issues, talks to the potential buyer or the homeowner who's, um, who's refinancing to determine what types of things they want to have done in addition to the health and safety. And they put together that whole list of work. Um, they then, the contractor will go out there and they'll use that HUD inspection. And it's broken down into 35 categories so that we can see what they saw and what the homeowner talked about. We'll go out there, do the site visit, meet with the homeowner or the potential buyer, go through what the HUD inspector has found, what they'd like to do for their wish list. We then put together our proposal we propose it to the homeowner, they agree to it. We send that off to the HUD consultant. They put it into an SOR, which is a specification of repair. They then take that and send it off to the lender with a copy of our proposal. And the lender then underwrites it based on that. Does the HUD consultant get to say, oh, well, that's too much or that's not enough or your, your costs are out of line? No, they really don't. Do they sometimes? Yes. They will sometimes even provide an estimate of what the standard costs should be for a particular repair, but they're not out there doing the job, doing the work, hiring the trade partner. So, you know, they don't have, they have a limited amount of knowledge as to what that should be and what's reasonable. And that same goes for the lender, by the way. The lender has a, a little bit of knowledge about what's reasonable in costs. The appraiser who goes out there, of course, is going to look at the SOR to determine where the after value is. Does the property have enough equity plus after value to support the rehab loan? But again, it comes down to us providing what we consider reasonable costs. So we don't bump it up because it's a 203K. We don't say, oh, it's a government loan. Let's, let's get some more money. We have our set pricing standard for everybody, reasonable pricing for the quality of work and for what we do. And we submit that to the HUD consultant who submits it on an SOR to the lender. Um, the, under, the lender sometimes will look at it and they might question how we've put something in there to determine what we're, we're actually doing because every proposal on a lender finance 203K has to be broken down into labor and material. You have to show the costs for both categories for everything that you're doing. Once in a while, there'll be several items that are material with only one section of labor and a lender might question, well, I don't understand you have three materials, one labor. Well, all of it is the same labor, the same contractor. We broke out the materials because they're in different areas of the house or there's they're something that's unique about them that we wanted to spell out. Lenders don't have an issue with that, but they sometimes will ask a question about it so that they can understand it in the process. Can a contractor get certified in the FHA 
K program? Well, in 1995 or so, HUD stopped certifying contractors, probably because it was very difficult because when they would certify them, they were essentially getting their license and their insurance and they were asking for a couple of references. Well, you know, the license is a fee. There's not a test like there would be for, you know, electrical and plumbing licenses are a little bit different. There's more that goes into that. But building, builders and home improvement, it's a matter of a fee. And insurance, yes, you have to have it. And references, of course, you're only going to give them the best of the references. Now, I will say that even though HUD doesn't certify contractors, there's a process with every lender to get approved. And what they're looking for there is similar to what HUD used to look for. They, of course, want to make sure you're licensed that you're insured, that you can provide a copy of the insurance, that you can provide references, both homeowners that you've worked with and done work for, and some trade, either trade partners or vendor partners, so that they can do a little bit of a background check. It's very superficial, but if they came across something that was out of line, they might not approve you to be a, a contractor for that particular FHA 203K. To assure that we are well-versed in the 203K and we exceed all those lender requirements, we partner with a a group called 203contractors.com. Every year we have to, we take their course and we have to pass their test to become certified. We have done that again for 2020, 2021. And every year we're gonna go back and we're gonna redo that. We're gonna take the test. We're gonna take the course, take the test, get certified. We get a certificate from them, which when I send our packet off to a lender, I always include in there. We get to use the logo on our website and on our materials. And most lenders, when they see that, realize that you've taken that extra step to be prepared to handle a 203K. How does a contractor get paid? Well, that's done through a series of draws on a 203K. Nothing comes from the homeowner out of pocket. It all comes through the loan. Depending on the type, it can vary the amount of draws and how we get them. So for a limited, typically there's two draws. The first draw is made after the closing of the loan for about 50%. The second is after the completion of the project and the inspection to confirm that the work was done and completed as proposed. On a standard 203K, you can have up to five draws. And that's the most common way it's done. And these draws are paid after inspections at a predetermined benchmark. It's either a percentage of work or type of work performed. Not all contractors can carry the load of a 203K and not a lot of them wanna be involved with it for that reason. We put ourselves in a great position to be able to be that number one 203K contractor in the state of Connecticut. So that's some of the FAQs. There is obviously much, much more to a 203K than those, but that is a good basis point for you to start understanding how it works and how you can best help your customers that want to take advantage of that.